A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Welcome to another edition of Bearing Arms, Cam and Company. My name is Cam Edwards. You know that by now, though, right? Coming up on the uh, program, Mr. Alan Gottlieb is going to join us from the Second Amendment Foundation. We've got a lot to talk about, actually. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the nomination of David Shipman, which is still floating out there in the ether. The Senate is on recess, so nothing imminent uh, in terms of a vote. I don't even think a vote would be imminent, even if the Senate was back in session, quite honestly. But uh, so far, you know, Biden is still hanging on to that nomination. He is not release David Chipman from his obligations. David Chipman has not said, all right, I'm, I'm tapping out here. You guys are going to have to go find somebody else. Uh, we've got some lawsuits to talk about, but uh, we're also going to talk about what's going on in Afghanistan uh, because yeah, I've read about this at Bearing Arms, the, the fact that the Taliban now has hundreds of thousands of small arms uh, that we provided to the Afghan army. Uh, in some cases, uh, perhaps uh, U.S. military items that uh, uh, were left behind at, let's say, Bagram Air Base when we booked out of there in the middle of the night. And at the same time, Biden is, however inadvertently, arming the Taliban. Again, I'm not saying it's intentional. May very well be inadvertent, but he's still arming the Taliban. Joe Biden is going after your right to keep and bear arms, my right to keep and bear arms our right to keep and bear arms. And that's where we start with Mr. Alan Gottlieb of the Second Amendment Foundation. Take a look and a listen. Alan, it's great talking with you today. Thanks for spending some time with us. It's always my pleasure, Cam. So I've got to ask you, first of all, you know, I, I, there, there's been so much attention and focus right now on just the debacle in Afghanistan and how poorly Biden has uh, handled the pullout of American troops. We have seen, I know you've talked about this at the Second Amendment Foundation, we've talked about it at Bearing Arms as well, the fact that Joe Biden is still intent on stripping Americans of their right to keep and bear arms, still wants to turn our lawfully possessed AR-15s into uh, prohibited items. Uh, he's talked about going after a 9 millimeter handguns, for goodness sakes. Uh, and yet he has allowed the Taliban to get a hold of real battlefield weapons of war, right? I mean, Biden talks about our semi-automatic rifles being these, uh, you know, battles, uh, battlefield rifles. No, that, that's what he's allowed the Taliban uh, to get uh, a hold of. What has been your reaction as you've been witnessing uh, what's going on in Afghanistan over the past week? Well, obviously, what's happening in Afghanistan is deplorable. And leaving all our military equipment behind to uh, arm the Taliban is obviously disgusting. Uh, you know, if, if I was an American soldier who fought in Afghanistan right now, I'd be just fuming. But at the same time, when he wants to disarm the American public and he's arming the Taliban, I mean, it, it sticks in the throat of, you know, millions of gun owners in our country. Uh, it, I mean, I don't, I don't know what to say. If, if this was a Hollywood movie, it would be a bad script. Right. I mean, I was, you know, I was thinking the other day, I mean, it was, it, it, it would be hard for the Obama Biden administration to top Operation Fast and Furious, which allowed thousands of guns to fall into the hands of drug cartels. In fact, not only allowed, uh, it was intended to put thousands of guns in the hands of Mexican drug cartel members. But somehow Biden did it. I mean, it, it, you know, and it only took less than a year of him being in office before he uh, uh, managed to trump uh, Operation Fast and Furious. And I think we're going to be dealing with the consequences of this for decades to come. But I, this administration has learned nothing. They are still intent. Uh, on going after our right to keep and bear arms. Biden is still uh, not backing down off the David Chipman nomination. We just saw the public comment period close on this uh, proposed ATF rule dealing with unfinished frames and, and receivers. Uh, and we know that the, the Biden administration is still, and Biden himself, is still intent on banning some of the most commonly owned firearms in America today. Well, you know, Cam, you know, let's be honest. If he had his way, he'd ban every kind of gun, period. He doesn't have the votes to do that, so he's only picking on certain firearms. But this is obviously a gun ban, you know, pro, you know, gun ban agenda that he's got, and he's not going to give it up. He's the most anti-gun president we've ever had in, in our country's history. And uh, luckily for us, gun owners are responding back against it. You know, we have a record number of new new first-time gun buyers in 2020 that are all getting engaged in active gun rights groups in 2021 now. And uh, the gun rights movement is stronger now than it's ever been. And uh, and so Biden is up really up against more than he's bit off, more than he realizes that he can that he can take care of. 
So I think gun rights are going to be okay as long as our gun rights activists across the country and the boots, uh, which I call our boots on the ground, stay there and keep fighting back. Well, you know, I was really pleased that we had almost 300,000 public comments submitted uh, on that uh, proposed ATF rule. I'm sure a handful of them came from gun control activists. I didn't see any. I mean, I probably looked through about a thousand of the uh, comments and everyone that I saw was opposed uh, to what the uh, Biden administration is trying to do. Uh, so I am glad to see the gun owners are engaged. Are, are you seeing, I mean, you talk about new gun owners. Are you seeing new gun activists right now? Are, are you seeing uh, uh, folks who are either new gun owners or maybe they're just getting off the fence? They've been a gun owner, but now they want to actively work to protect their Second Amendment rights. Most definitely. In fact, both the Citizens Committee for the Right to Keep Their Arms and the Second Amendment Foundation have been running national TV spots the last few weeks. Uh, with Biden's, you know, quotes on it, he in his own voice talking about banning nine millimeter handguns and semi-automatic rifles. And we've seen now over 20,000 people just in the last week alone with this in our efforts to, 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 to fight back. Uh, th- there is no doubt that people are getting more engaged in it. They realize what Biden is trying to do. They don't want to be disarmed. They see rising crime in our country. They see defunding of the police. They, they, they see his activities that, you know, make us all less safe. And they realize that when it comes to protecting themselves in our country, they're the first responders. And more and more people have gone out and bought guns, and more and more people are joining gun rights groups to fight back. You know, and I, I got to say, I'm, I'm, I'm really, really pleased to hear that because you're right. It is going to take those boots on the ground. I mean, we've got, you know, we, we, we've got a, a gun control lobby right now that is very well funded. Uh, they are working in a variety of, of, of settings, whether it's the legislative arena. We, you, you know, you've seen as well as I have the, uh, the, the amount of litigation uh, that is coming from the gun control lobby, whether it's, you know, uh, uh, suing Smith and Wesson over the Poe shooting in California or the Brady campaign's attorney, uh, Jonathan Lowey, uh, helping the government of Mexico. Uh, sue many firearms manufacturers, uh, trying to hold them responsible for cartel violence. Uh, and then we get into the, the, the regulatory side of things, uh, the, the uh, attempts that uh, Biden is making to try to change law via executive action. Uh, you know, and with all of those threats, um, again, you, you truly believe that as long as gun owners are active and engaged and involved, we can defeat these attempts to, uh, to infringe on our right to keep and bear arms? Well, it's a tough fight. There's no doubt about it, but I really believe we can win this one. Uh, you know, so far Biden has now been in office over six months and he really hasn't been able to put his anti-gun rights agenda, you know, you know, through. And so far we've got it fairly well stalled. And as long as our people stay active and engaged, I think we'll be there. Uh, come the midterm elections in t- 2022, uh, I really believe that we're going to flip both the House and the, and the Senate. And, and, and the, the, the major threat that Biden can do to us except by executive orders. And on those executive orders, we'll be challenging many of those in court. And I really believe we're going to win. I, I do too. Um, I, I think that this is really some, some egregious overreach on the part of the administration, uh, usurping, uh, legislative authority and, and trying to, uh, you know, just put it in the hands of the executive branch. And I'm glad you talked about the midterms because I know we're still more than a year away. Um, but you're right. I mean, if we can take back, if we can take back the House and the Senate, that would be fantastic. But if we can even take back one of those two chambers, we can stop the legislative threat uh, from going forward. I, I, I'm a little concerned that, you know, I know that in the Senate right now, you've got people like Joe Manchin, Senator Sinema, who say not interested in nuking the filibuster. Um, are, are you concerned that as we get closer to the midterms, if the Democrats realize, OK, we're going down, um, that they will ramp up the pressure? on those Senate Democrats to to go along, to nuke the filibuster, uh, to try to ram through their agenda with, you know, the bare minimum of votes. Uh, is, is that something that you are concerned about as we, you know, look forward to next November? Well, Cam, there's no doubt they're going to ramp up the pressure on, on, on a couple of the more moderate Democrats uh, to try and push the filibuster out, out the window so that they can enact gun control with just 50 votes and the vice president casting the uh, critical tiebreaker. But I'm also really concerned not only on that, I'm concerned, you know, with COVID and other things, if you lose one or two senators who are on our side, uh, due to illness or retirement or death or something, the Democrats totally controlled the Senate and then we're in really big trouble. So this is still all touch and go. There's a lot of things that could happen. Uh, and so we've got to stay extremely vigilant. 
Absolutely. Well, again, folks can uh, follow along at saf.org. That's the website for the Second Amendment Foundation, uh, for the Citizens Committee for the Right to Keep and Bear Arms. We're full disclosure. I serve on the board of directors, uh, CCR kba.org and alan i'm going to ask you a question that i get asked all the time uh whenever i'm doing radio interviews what is the difference between the second amendment foundation and the citizens committee for the right to keep and bear arms well cam that's a good question for the general <laughs> public uh the second amendment foundation is what's known as the 501c3 nonprofit educational legal defense foundation donations to it are tax deductible because it doesn't do any lobbying the Citizens Committee for the Right to Keep Our keep Arms is also a nonprofit group, IRS Code 501c4, which means that it can do a, you know, unlimited direct and grassroots lobbying, but therefore contributions are not tax deductible. Uh, and so each one stakes out a separate part of the gun rights movement, uh, and they work together when possible, but one specializes in direct and grassroots lobbying, and the other special, specializes in public education and legal defense. There you go. Alan, as always, sir, thank you for everything you do. Appreciate you spending some time with us today and look forward to talking again very soon. Great, Cam. Stay well. Appreciate Alan joining us on the program and looking forward to having him back again here before long. Uh, let's turn our attention now to today's Armed Citizen story, our good deed of the day, and our recidivist report. We will start there with a story out of Michigan where a prosecutor says a shooting of a husband and wife could have and should have been prevented because the suspect should have been behind bars. This was in uh, South Haven, Michigan, uh, and the shooting took place last Friday on uh, the South Haven Pier. Uh, according to the uh, police chief, Natalie Thompson, 19-year-old Aiden Ingalls shot a husband and wife at that pier before shooting and killing himself. She said it was a random shooting. Meanwhile, the uh, Van Buren County prosecuting attorney, uh, Susan Zerdeven, said this is a tragedy that we felt could have and should have been prevented. She said that her office wanted to try Ingalls as an adult back in 2018 for planning on shooting up a high school. She said law enforcement and the prosecutor's office recognized the extreme public safety threat and made the decision to prosecute him as an adult. This would have protected the public for a longer period of time and allowed the court to have jurisdiction for extended services and surveillance. But the judge in this case denied that motion and instead said that uh, the individual had to be tried as a juvenile. Prosecutor said, uh, I argue the public safety risk was too great and the alleged offense too heinous to allow for a juvenile sentence. The judge disagreed and placed the greatest weight on the lesser factors, focusing on what was the best interest of the juvenile. The uh, Pawpaw Police Chief Eric Marshall said uh, the judge, Judge Dufon, Judge Jeffrey Dufon, made the wrong decision in this case. Quote, there's no denying that. Uh, police said, though, even after... This case was uh, uh, charged uh, and tried in juvenile court. Uh, Ingle should not have been able to legally purchase a firearm after he pled guilty to planning that school shooting in 2018. Uh, investigators say it is unclear where Ingalls got the two guns used in the shooting. The Van Buren County Sheriff Daniel Abbott says it's no secret that mental health awareness is a big part of this case and needs to be on the forefront. You've got to take out people's ages in cases like this. You have to look at the facts in cases like this, and you have to address it in cases like this. And Michigan, like many other states around the country, has a critical shortage right now of inpatient mental health beds, outpatient mental health resources, and you won't hear uh, Governor Gretchen Whitmer say much about this. Uh, you know, all kinds of talk about gun control. But, uh, no, Whitmer, and, and to be fair, I, I don't really think the Republicans in charge of the uh, legislature in Michigan have made it a priority either. Uh, again, this is not a problem that is exclusive to Michigan. This is a problem that is, I think, inherent in the vast majority of states around the country. Uh, and the only time we seem to talk about mental health is when there's a mass shooting or when there's some sort of shooting. We can't just wait until then. We have to talk about mental health as an issue all on its own. But unfortunately, politicians, for whatever reason, on both sides of the aisle, really don't want to talk much about it. Or if they do want to talk about it, that's where it stops. They talk, not a lot of action. Uh, on to today's Armed Citizen story from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, mild stopping grounds. There's the uh, headline, Armed Man Shoots and Kills Robbery Suspect in Bricktown. Now, I have to say, I I'm surprised that this story has not gotten more local attention. This is Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. This is a pretty pro-Second Amendment friendly state. It's a constitutional carry state. They passed uh, a Second Amendment uh, sanctuary bill earlier this year. And this is an armed citizen acting to defend himself in a 
pretty popular area. Bricktown is just outside of Oklahoma City's downtown. Uh, you got a lot of dining. You got a lot of uh, uh, you know entertainment spots. And according to police, the uh, attempted armed robbery uh, happened on Monday. The suspect approaching two people, pulled out a gun, and then demanded their property. According to the police report, one of the victims then pulled out his own gun and shot the alleged robber. Officers quickly arrived on scene. They began CPR on the suspect, but the suspect did die at the scene. Authorities say the victims are cooperating with police. Don't have really any information about the suspect, uh, but it does appear to be a case of self-defense. We'll keep our eyes on this story, see if we get any more information. As I said, I'm kind of surprised we haven't learned more details, but uh, hopefully they are forthcoming. And finally today, our good deed of the day from Inglewood, New Jersey, where a officer in the right place at the right time, willing and able to do the right thing to save two people trapped inside of a burning home. Uh, the fire reported Sunday morning about 3.30 in Inglewood. Officer John McConnell actually heard the cries for help inside the residence there. He was not able, though, to open the front door of the home, so he ended up using a cinder block to gain entry. He... Uh, Got inside the residence. It was filled with smoke, but he was still able to find two residents and extricate them. The Inglewood Fire Department arrived at the scene shortly thereafter and ended up rescuing a third resident who was trapped on the roof. Um, There were some minor injuries reported, but uh, everybody, including Officer McConnell, treated and released. So in the right place, at the right time, willing to do the right thing, Officer John McConnell there in Inglewood, New Jersey. We thank you, sir, for your very good deed. And we thank you for being a part of this edition of Bearing Arms, Cam and Company. Uh, We will be back tomorrow with more of the latest Second Amendment news and information from all across the nation. Also, just a reminder that tomorrow is VIP Gold Live Chat Day. Myself and my colleague Ed Morrissey from Hot Air will be taking your questions and comments at 1.30 Eastern if you are a VIP Gold subscriber. How do you become a VIP Gold subscriber? Easy. Just go to BearingArms.com slash subscribe. If you would like to become a VIP member, you can do that too. In fact, you can use the promo code GUNS and you can get 25% off of your membership. Again, just go to BarryAndArms.com slash subscribe. And don't forget to check out BarryAndArms.com throughout the day for the latest Second Amendment news and information that you need to know about. We'll see you back here on Wednesday. But until then, be well, be safe, and be free.